Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Hello and welcome to the Plant Based Podcast, brought to you by me, Ellen Mary and Michael Perry. We should all be cautious of caring for our environment and making small sustainable changes in our daily lives. So why not start by making delicious changes? Stonely Wines create their premium wine in New Zealand and it's made from 100% sustainably sourced grapes and it's vegan certified. Stonely Sauvignon Blanc expresses the vibrancy and fresh flavours of the Marlborough region through their minimal intervention winemaking philosophy and collaboration with nature. We have a unique discount for our listeners. You can get 20% off Stonely Sauvignon Blanc exclusively on Amazon using the code STONELY20. S-T-O-N-E-L-E-I-G-H-2-0. Peat has featured in the horticultural news a lot over the past couple of years with the gradual commitment to eradicate peat for the amateur gardener. But we don't hear so much about the use of peat in houseplants. So we're here at Geb and Green in Cambridge who grow and sell peat free houseplants and are on a mission to combat greenwashing in the industry. Why are you giggling? <laughs> because that was really hard. You had to put your glasses on to read that, didn't you? I can't see the words properly. <laughs> it's like I need a massive auto cue. Anyway, we're with Kate Brown and Will Clayton and we're sitting at a table with biscuits in front of us, so happy days. It's always a good thing. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having us. Good morning. Uh, sorry, I woke up with a really sore throat. I sound like an 0898 number, but never mind. <laughs> so we're going to start to talk about sustainable houseplants, but first of all, tell us a bit about your backgrounds, kind of, uh, you know, how you came to give birth to Gavin Green. Do you want to kick off, Will? Mm. Sure. So essentially, houseplants are a passion project of, of ours. Mm-hmm. Um, I run a, a farm, a horticultural farm, where we've been at the forefront of cut flowers for quite a long time, along with some other inspirational growers around the country. And we have a fantastic glasshouse facility. And a couple of years ago, I decided to pursue my passion for houseplants mm-hmm. and convert it from an all-year-round oriental lily facility into uh, British houseplants, because I think the, I think the market's ready for it, and I think mm. the market could do with a bit of yeah. change and moving away from some Dutch kit. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when did you get involved? Well, <coughs> Kate Will told me he had this idea bubbling quite, yeah. quite some time ago um, and was asking about my background because I have actually had eight and a half years off of work have, mm-hmm. looking after my children. Um, and then invited me to the glass house. We had a chat before entering the glass house about the business opportunities and I walked in. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> plants, plants always seduce everyone. And That's I the way. I just said, well, they can't really say no. So here we are. Uh-huh. I don't blame you. I mean, when you walk into the glass house, it is quite a sight, isn't it? You know, just rows and rows of amazing house plants. Yeah. And I know, mm-hmm. obviously, part of, or, or, or pretty much all of what you do is producing them sustainably. But what is a sustainable house plant? What does that mean? I think... People don't even question where their houseplants mm-hmm. are coming from. So it's not even what is a sustainable houseplant. It's actually where is my plant gr- grown? Sorry, where is my plant from and what it's grown in? Mm. So for us, it's looking at all the sustainability elements. We are UK grown, therefore our, our plants aren't having to be shipped fully mm-hmm. mature from the Netherlands. We are growing in not just a peat-free growing medium, but a recycled growing medium. Mm-hmm. So Will has already alluded to the fact that we used to grow the flowers in the glass house. That's a very different kettle of fish in terms of the growing medium being left in the glass house. So we have our own sterilising facility. The peat-free coir is thrown into the steriliser, it's heated to 90 degrees for 90 minutes and it comes out fully recyclable. Mm -hmm. We're able to use it again. 
So yeah, definitely the peat-free element, but we are going one step better by utilising waste material to grow in. Um, and how is it all heated as well inside the greenhouse? Yeah, we really focused on sustainability elements from the growing perspective as well. We are heating our glass house using a biomass boiler. It's, it's government approved on their RHI scheme. So it's actually wood pellets mm-hmm. that we're burning mm-hmm. rather than gas, which again is used over in, in um, the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. We also use LED lights. Um, we don't actually have them on. We really minimise the usage of those. Just for the Just aloes, because the they're bay. a bit precious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we also capture all of the rainwater from the roof and use that in our automated misting system. And anything in addition, so the really hot summer mm-hmm. months, we have a spring-fed reservoir. So we don't mm-hmm. have to touch the mains at all. Mm, that's wow. really cool. What about the pots? Yep, the pots, again, tick another sustainability pot, mm-hmm. box. They are non-virgin plastic and they are curbside recyclable mm-hmm. when they come to the end of their life. So well. non-virgin means they are recycled. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. They have been used Because a lot of, a lot of we... listeners might not have heard that, yeah. that phrase before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's a sustainable house plant. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of those things come together mm-hmm. to make that. I have a quick question, though, Will. Where are all the lilies? Where did they all go? Were they yeah. growing in there? And neither that somewhere? was quite a pivot from lilies to yeah. house plants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the great thing is the lily bulbs actually get uh, cut up and sterilised with the coir. So mm-hmm. um, the good part of the lilies are in the pots of the, uh-huh. of the house plants, um, but they've been fully sterilised um, as part of, by recycling in those lily leaves, the stems, the bulbs, mm-hmm. oh, also strawberries, peonies, agapanthus. There's a whole load of stuff mm-hmm. in our, in our houseplant growing material. It binds that coir together and creates this wonderful fibrous mm-hmm. neutral growing medium. Mm-hmm. So they're yeah, in the that's, pots. That's yeah. really cool. So they're there in the pots yeah. as well. Yeah. So you're not just buying a houseplant. You're buying... Don't worry, the lily will not grow out your pot. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the other thing to say is actually the growing medium that you're finding in your pot has potentially been used up to 30 times already, hasn't it? Wow. That's right, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So it's, it's really good stuff. Uh-huh. That's really cool. And then to build it up each season, what are you then adding into there? So a wetting agent goes mm-hmm. into there um, mm-hmm. to help with water retention and some perlite, and mm-hmm. we do put a slow-release fertiliser okay. in there as well. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. But I like, um, just to go back on the pots a moment, because I think when people walk into a peat-free houseplant nursery, they're going to expect to see plants in coir pots or something that looks quite rustic. But of course, it doesn't have to be that way, does it? Because you are using recycled and recyclable plastic. So that is sustainable in itself, even though at first sight you might think, oh, plastic. But I think there's too much emotion around plastic sometimes. Yeah, and plastic yeah. still has a role to play, doesn't it? Mm. Um, we've looked at coir yeah. pots before. And, you know, if we're growing in the glass house for six months, for example, mm-hmm. that already eats into the life of a coir yeah. pot. Yeah, I think you're just being... Not only have you started a really great peat-free houseplant commercial nursery, but you're got really honest elements to it as well because no world is 100% this way you're kind of doing the best you can and I think it's fantastic I think it's coining that phrase isn't it progression rather than yeah definitely definitely and you really are the furthest along on the journey I would say I think you look at scale Mm. here as well you Mm. you absolutely can go in coir pots yeah other but that would be very small just in a greenhouse you can't do it on a scale of hundreds of thousands because there is some variability in demand Mm -hmm. that those pots run you actually end up with more waste so Mm. if you looked at the whole life cycle and the whole journey of a plant Mm -hmm. it would probably be less environmentally friendly Mm -hmm. you're also not going to get your sort of coir pots made from recycled coir Mm -hmm. generally Mm -hmm. that's going to be made from virgin coir there are issues there with sustainability exactly use origin countries so at the minute we we don't want to let the best be the enemy of the good we think the best Mm -hmm. way to get the most sustainable plants into people's houses is is what Mm -hmm. we're doing it's really interesting i think very very brave because the narrative can be emotional like we said and i was talking to a company in czech republic um at this german trade fair the other week and they're doing like different plastic kind of things that you regrow vegetables in sprouting things and and they are you know proud to be using plastic in the same way so it can be done yeah Absolutely. And I think if you look at the, the core ethos of what we do, recycled anything is pretty much better than new anything else. Mm-hmm. We've got billions of tonnes of plastic, mm. we've got hundreds of millions of tonnes of growing yeah. media floating around the UK. Reusing that rather than mm. starting on anything new has got yeah. to be the, the first thing we look at. And I think, uh, like, obviously you were doing lilies, agapanthus, etc. before then. How long did it take you to get the decision to pivot to houseplants? Because the way I look at it, walking in today, I think you've hit it at just the right time. Because you're 
taking it to a commercial level and kind of, you know, it's been tested and now people have a demand for houseplants, but also that demand for something that is more sustainable and that has hit the mainstream. So I think your timing is just so perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Did you know it? (laughs) (laughs) So uh, I'm going to miss someone. Better to be lucky than good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you felt you. it in your bones. No, I, I think it's a golfer. I think it's someone like Arnie Palmer or someone. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no Isn't doubt. Isn't that a cocktail? Oh, Arnold Palmer. Do you know, I yeah. think that is, is, it it? is a golfer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think there is a cocktail. Maybe mm. it's named after the golfer. I think it's quite an yeah. American one. Yeah. Arnold That's, Palmer. Yeah. I think It's a is. breakfast one. Yeah. Anyway, whilst, whilst Michael eats <laughs> the cookies. This is what we call a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> whilst Michael eats the cookies, I think it would be really good for our listeners who uh, don't know so much about the peat side of things, why is it so important to not be using peat? You know, let's talk about that. Yeah, so peat is just, like, the most wonderful natural resource in tackling climate change. Mm. We hear all about planting trees, um, and I think people understand that. Everyone did biology and photosynthesis, Mm -hmm. but people don't understand that actually peatlands are just as important, if not more. Mm. Bogs aren't sexy. They don't Mm -hmm. get the PR. Mm -hmm. But in terms of peatlands themselves, um, they cover only 3% of the world's um, land surface area, but they hold 30% of soil carbon, which is Mm -hmm. actually more... Yeah, it's huge. Mm. And it's more than twice of all of the forests combined. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's vital. It's really, Mm -hmm. really vital. And we need to get that message out there because I don't think there is the awareness. Mm -hmm. People buy a house plant thinking oh, well, it's green, it's living, I'm doing a good thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas actually we need to put that environmental lens on top of that house plant Mm -hmm. so people are are questioning where it's from and what it's grown in. I think it's also equally important that we recognise there are millions of tonnes of peat in circulation in UK horticulture at the minute. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't forget that 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 peat has been dug up. It's not Mm. going to go back in the bog particularly well. We need to also talk about recycling Recycling and reusing Mm -hmm. that peat in circulation. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be chucked on the fields, dumped or treated as a waste product. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think the debate will move on from peat-free, peat versus peat-free, to a more Mm -hmm. holistic Mm -hmm. look at the market as a whole. But certainly new peat, Mm -hmm. as Kate said, is, is wrong. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And, it, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of talk about, I mean, amateur, it's banned, isn't it, for amateur gardeners after a, a, a 20, 2024. 2024. But there's, mm. again, yeah. there's questions of, does that mean January 2024? Yeah. Does that yeah. mean the December end of 2024? 2024. Yeah. Yeah. There's certainly not enough impetus yeah. on mm-hmm. making that change from a yeah, government perspective. Yeah. And that's really more about, um, you know, buying bags of compost that are peat-free at the garden centre, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But do, it, does that even relate to houseplants? Does that, is that the same thing or? well absolutely because people in general will look <coughs> pot up their plants mm-hmm. um, so if, if you buy a 12 centimeter pot mm-hmm. at some point that plant <coughs> is going to get root bound and unhappy if you yeah mm-hmm. if you keep it growing nicely and you want to put it into a bigger pot um or look to recycle it um hopefully put in a bigger pot and at that point you need some growing media so people are buying are buying their compost there yeah we'd always advocate a good general mm-hmm. multi-purpose peat free yeah compost for that so um well actually while you just mentioned that if somebody is potting up their houseplant, so they get their houseplant from you, it's peat-free, which is amazing, and then hopefully it grows and it's beautiful and it needs to be repotted at some point, um, like loads of mine do at the moment. <laughs> 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 What's a good mix? Is it? Would you just recommend a multi-purpose peat-free compost or is there a different mix, mix like coir, perlite? I don't know. What would you recommend? I would definitely go for just a good multi-purpose mm-hmm. peat-free mm-hmm. mix and then look to see if you need to add any nutrition yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. The, the plant will tell you if you're unhappy, but I think it's, it's normally best to view soils, composts, growing media as a neutral base that you then add to. It's going to mm. be more sustainable finding a nice, well-sourced fertiliser or mm. addition to a, to a neutral mix than trying to sort of get that in the Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the key also is you've grown them peat free so if someone's then taking the house plant home make sure that you continue repotting it into peat mm-hmm. free Absolutely. You yeah. know, don't go backwards, let's go forwards mm-hmm. you know, so yeah that's really important keep it sustainable Hi guys, my name's Ben Cross, fourth generation award-winning British Ulstrom area grower here at Crossland's Flower Nursery down here in Sussex. 
just stood in one of our big greenhouses at the moment. Birds are tweeting, sun's out, 20 odd degrees in the greenhouse, and it's a beautiful April April spring day. The South Downs National Park is five minutes to the north of us with the beach five minutes to the south. So a lovely little microclimate here in Sussex and the Ulstrom area. They well, they just love it here. <laughs> the flower beds are about a metre wide, 30 metres long, and we've got hundreds and hundreds of rows of Ulstrom area through our big greenhouses down here at Crosslands. And at the moment, there's fresh spears of growth and Ulstrom area stems coming up from the soil as uh, the roots are now waking up and we're going to be in our busy season, ready for the 2023 uh, busy sort of harvest season. So yes, we harvest millions of stems through the course of the year. So we do harvest and produce in the winter, but it's really spring and autumn when they're in their pomp and at their best. So we're just going to come into our busy season now. Lots of stems are budding up and going to produce nice big juicy, juicy flowers for everyone. Uh, British Ulstrom area, uh, nice and sustainable to grow down here in Sussex, known as a cool crop, so they don't take a lot of heat through the winter. About 10 or 13 degrees is sort of their optimum temperature, and they're also known as a dry crop as well. So in the winter, we only water for 20 minutes once a month in the winter, uh, 20 minutes once every two weeks in spring and autumn, and 20 minutes once every 10 days in the summer. So we're not watering every day, we're not even watering every other day. Uh, in, when it comes into the summer. Uh, we don't use peat, we're peat free. Uh, we just use organic compost. And uh, yeah, just want to say a big up to Ellen and Michael for having me on this awesome podcast and look forward to giving you updates here from Crosslands uh, through May and June as well. If you want to find out more, you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at Ulstrom Area Ben, and you can check us out on Facebook by typing in Crosslands Flower Nursery. I also run the British Flowers Rock Movement, so with over 90% of flowers in the UK now being imported, the carbon footprint of importing all those flowers is pretty epic, pretty redonkulous. So I also run the British Flowers Rock campaign, just getting it out there getting the education out there a bit more about buying local and buying homegrown and not flown bloom. So yeah, if you want to know more, check us out on the socials. And yeah, just big up, big British flower power love to Michael and Ellen for having me on this awesome podcast. So uh, catch you next month. Thanks for having me. I really like the way that you guys are running the company, the way you explain stuff as well. Do you think like with the horticultural media or the media at large, do you think that they're explaining things in the right way when it comes to moving away from peat? What do you think they could do differently? Because for me, I always look upon it and I see too much emotion and guilt, guilt there, which I don't think is the way to help people to change. I feel like, uh, I said this to you on the nursery earlier, Kate, is people are always told what is wrong, but they're not told how to put it right. And that's what, what, what do you yeah, guys think? That's please. what we're yeah. trying to do. Rather than just saying, don't do that, don't mm. do this, we are providing a solution. Yeah. Oh, a what do we say? Solutions, solutions are sexy. sexy. Yeah. We're yeah. going to put that on a t shirt. It's a new yeah. t shirt, exactly. <laughs> but genuinely, I think in terms of houseplants, it's, it's a simple switch moving you know, to Gebbin Green, peat free, recycled medium houseplants to no detriment of your own. We grow mm -hmm. really high quality plants in there. Price points, we are very much on par with competitors. You're not paying a premium for this sustainability, the sustainable premium that you often do in mm -hmm. other um, consumer products. So yeah, it, give yourself a pat on the back, I think mm -hmm. is the, the ultimate answer. Make a simple switch, get a good quality plant mm -hmm. and you've, you've done good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're doing this and it looks phenomenal. So you're doing well. And I know you've got some lovely news coming up soon, but we won't, won't spoil that and tell everybody. Um, but why aren't other retailers doing this? Why are other houseplant sellers still growing in, in peat? I think we've got to be a bit careful about talking about other growers, other retailers, because we're not involved in their decision-making process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But inertia is the, the most likely answer mm -hmm. the, the industry mm -hmm. has been based in Holland for a very long time mm -hmm. it's very very easy to buy uh, from large well established excellent growers in Holland um, it's very convenient, the systems are all in place 
Um, so it makes it very, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. As with anything totally new, it's always a little bit more difficult in the early stages. Mm. Um, so I think that's probably got something to do with it. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. certainly met with very favorable reaction from lots of retailers um, whenever mm. we've met them. Um, they're really enthused. But, you know, it's up to, to growers to make it as easy as possible for retailers mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, of course. And I guess also govern, government policy. Like if the government says mm -hmm. we need to ban peat, then you have to ban peat. Yeah, yeah and they, yeah, they obviously rode back on that on the commercial mm -hmm. scale. They pushed the timeline back and we're still waiting, mm -hmm. I think, for the latest... Uh, the latest update on when it's going to be pushed back to that was disappointing i think um yeah i think those uh, lobbying for for that could have chosen a different hill to die on um, <laughs> but there, there, there we go you know we will continue to do what we can and and try and make it as easy for people to get beautiful mm -hmm. response. there's no extra cost to us it's not like our plants are more expensive so we're trying to make it a, a totally painless switch for yeah. retailers wholesalers consumers it's, as well. it's twofold though isn't it it's not just from the growers perspective you know, our ultimate aim is to educate the public mm -hmm. on the on the need to go peat free. Um, so we need them going into the retailers and, yeah. and making mm -hmm. those demands. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. where are your peat free plants? Yeah, make it consumer led. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. go in and actually yeah. say to yeah. to the seller, do you, are these grown in peat free compost? Yeah. If not, why not? Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Are and you going to get any? And we need thing? people around the table having these conversations. So if you know about the importance of peat. Come and tell your friends. Yeah. You know, when, yeah. when you're there admiring their house plants, question it. You know, where did you get those? Did you know, mm -hmm. actually, if that's grown in peat, it's had a really negative carbon mm -hmm. impact? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The way I always explained it when we were first sort of setting up and pitching to people is, is chickens. You know, if you go back 20 years ago, a free range chicken or a free range egg was a rarity. It was just mm -hmm. these are eggs, yeah, yeah. large, medium, or small. Mm. Now you, you will never find a shop that aren't selling happy eggs, and yeah. consumers are demanding that. Yeah, and they're saying yeah. we're willing to. Mm. Yeah, but to, I guess to, the price has also that. changed a bit to allow that, maybe. It, it yeah. has, which is why I'm hopeful the change will come even quicker mm. in houseplants yeah, because yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. need a high, higher price for yeah. the houseplants, well, yeah. whereas you do with the chickens. So mm -hmm. it should be a seamless transition once consumers yeah. are aware, understand, mm -hmm. and. Mm. Yeah. It's, it, I think it might, it's partially that, isn't it? Making a change is a big deal, especially if you're on a commercial scale. So to suddenly mm -hmm. say, right, we're going peat free, maybe the cost element is a bit scary. Mm -hmm. You know, perhaps the knowledge of will they grow, you know, that fear of will they grow okay in peat free yeah. uh, compost. So you're kind of leading the way, you know, other growers mm -hmm. will see what you're doing and go, oh, well, this works. And look, I'm not going to blame other growers because it's their no. livelihoods. You make one mistake and that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Margin, margin yeah. Yeah. Culture, yeah. So totally. I'm not going to blame other growers. We're <coughs> lucky in that we were growing peat free in with all our cut flowers for a long, long period of time. Yeah. So yeah. we have that expertise in growing yeah. peat free. But we, did you need to test... It wasn't anything to be scared of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Did you need to test that initially, though? We did. Yeah. We did test it. Um, mm -hmm. We tested it fairly short period of time. We tested mm -hmm. it for about four months. Good growing months, mm -hmm. um, late summer, autumn. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we did test over about 12 species. Okay. Uh -huh. Good wide range, requiring mm -hmm. sort of different needs from aloes to monsteras mm -hmm. to alocasias philodendra. Mm -hmm. So we got a good good range and yeah, we we were right. There wasn't any need to be scared that we could dive uh, in. But mm -hmm. I, I don't blame other growers for no. being a little slower on that route. If you've always grown in peat, it is going to be scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've got their business to think about, but, but it's, it, it is totally doable. Yeah. Yeah. Others, yeah. others are starting to follow suit. I was going to say, and there's room for more. You know, yeah. the house plant yeah, industry yeah. Is, yeah. is massive. Yeah. I think yeah. it's mm -hmm. over 70% of adults in the UK own a house plant. Mm -hmm. That's mad. So <laughs> there's there's awesome, room. awesome. Yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering as well, kind of, because you're bringing this to a commercial audience, which is, you know, a really important part of it. But I don't know if you know the answer or maybe you don't want to answer the question. But like if you were now in if your nursery was using peat and now when it's peat free, is it is the cost price any different? Is it actually cheaper to produce peat free plants now you're set up? It's slightly different for us because yeah. we're recycling everything mm. on site, which is the mm -hmm. sort of the really unique thing we're doing. Yeah, yeah. But no, not really if you're another nursery. If you mm. want to buy a new coir or new peat based mm -hmm. growing media, it's not a massive difference at the mm. minute. Okay. But those prices do change. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's as we speak today. It could mm -hmm. be different in a month or two. Um, mm. And it has been pretty volatile over the last 14 months. Mm. But, but, because we're committed to using waste product, it is different and there is yeah, yeah. Yeah, more expensive for us to grow peat as well. And, and you know, mm -hmm. we all know that quail is better than peat, but there mm -hmm. are still some really questionable 
roots with, with koi as well. And mm -hmm. you alluded to it in terms of the water content, <coughs> the fact mm -hmm. that it is shipped in, um, mm -hmm. and then it potentially promotes this, this sort of monoculture in terms of growing mm -hmm. coconut mm -hmm. trees and yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so the fact that we are recycling waste. Mm. Is, is just mm. one step better. Dare That's I say this, and yeah. I know I always say it whenever we talk about koya, but mm -hmm. I really struggle with it in all mm. aspects, like the pots, the little koya things that you plant your seeds in. Mm. Like, I really struggle well, with it. <coughs> probably because most mm. of the koya you find is is virgin koya, and it's mm -hmm. got that rough texture to it. It's slightly bigger lumps. It's, mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because ours has been recycled so many times before we then use it for house plants, yeah. it's got that finer, almost peaty texture. Yeah, just it. what you need. That mm. texture is so important. It goes back yeah, to yeah. The, re the recycling. Yeah. Element, yeah. See, it's the best. That's really Yay. interesting. <laughs> um, um, I just want before we move on, I, like your range as well. How many plants are in the range at the moment? Just under 40. 40 yeah. Just yeah. under 40. We have recently um, potted up about another 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah ever mm -hmm. increasing. But I really love walking around the nursery. It's very, you've started with the classics which I think is a really good move because they're the plants people can relate to. You're yeah. going to get into the mainstream with those as well. Kind of what plans do you have for your inventory? Are you going to bring in more of the unique plants or what? How are you going to expand the range? So, I mean, yes, essentially we're always trialling new things. So ferns mm -hmm. will be the next mm -hmm. one. We're currently not selling ferns. They're growing, they're, they're, they've just gone in. Um, so ferns, Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully, as long as they grow well, be yeah. be the next thing we add. Beyond that, you're looking at things like weird and wonderful calatheas and mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The cost of those is really, really, really high. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be reasonably confident yeah. that the market yeah. is there for them. Um, mm. So we'll see how it goes on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of the, the growing facilities <coughs> set up, I mean, the prime environment, so if there is the demand out there, we, we can meet it. We mm. absolutely can. Mm -hmm. I mean, we okay. walked around the, the greenhouse and pilliers, um, monsteras, the spider plants, mm -hmm. peace lilies, all of those amazing plants that clear the air of toxins. Like, people mm -hmm. are really looking into how they can live a more healthy life and look after their well being. You've got, I mean, all plants are going to help for sure, mm -hmm. but you've got all of the classic range, you know, from the clean air study that NASA done years and years yeah. ago mm -hmm. that, um, you know, is people are looking for because they're learning about that and then they're going, oh, I think I will get a. Yeah, they're the relatable you know, ones. They're the yeah. ones that people yeah, go to well, first. Spider plants is a retro classic, let's be honest. And yeah. retro is back. Exactly. <laughs> and the fact you can self-propagate a spider plant. Right. It's really yeah. easy. It's so yeah. easy. Yeah. Exactly yeah. that. And uh, so it's really awesome to see. Actually, I really mm. loved seeing all your spider plants with all the little babies on. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. And obviously, Monstera has had a massive thing going on over the last few mm. years as well. And uh, that's not going anywhere soon because they they look so beautiful. Yeah, I think they're the plants people relate to, and that yeah. gives them confidence. And maybe then they move on to something more exotic. But that's yeah. up to them. Yeah, but they start getting them at the beginning, yeah, knowing yeah, what definitely. the plants are. The retro vibe is all back mm. anyway. So that's really cool. I love that. Um, mm. And also, you have massive aloe veras. I have to talk about your aloe veras because I love them. There is no house that should be without an aloe vera, quite <laughs> frankly, especially in the kitchen. Mm. So I'm always taking off a leaf. I, I, I have this really weird thing where I go into the oven and burn here, and I do it all of the time, and my husband is like, have you done it again? Seriously. <laughs> but the aloe vera just is amazing when you just dab a little bit on. Yeah. Um, and they're so easy to look after, and um. you've got some that are gigantic. They're so have, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cool. So, so yeah. I can show you how to make face packs later. <laughs> we did it with Dr. Green once in a... Uh, in I'm Hulon, sure so. Will would yeah. really enjoy that. <laughs> I, 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 well, I would. Absolutely, yeah. Well, some of our workers eat, eat the yellows as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's really so good for you. good for you. Uh, uh, before we move on, I just want to pick up when you mentioned ferns earlier, because mm -hmm. ferns are renowned for enjoying peat. How, uh, how are you going to work with ferns? Do you think this is going to be easy moving to peat free? I don't think we're going to have a problem. Mm. I mean, ultimately, it's, when, you, when you're looking at growing, it's just a combination of water, heat, light mm. and nutrients. Mm -hmm. We're able to add the nutrients we need to a neutral mm -hmm. growing base. Mm -hmm. uh, our water retention is just as good as peat with our, our mixture. We've, we've got all the tests and mm -hmm. uh, it's just as good. The heat is no different to if you're growing in a, in a heated environment. So. I, I don't think we're going to have a problem, mm -hmm. but we will okay. yeah. watch this space. Check, watch check, this check our website in about three months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll soon know, right? It's been such 
a pleasure chatting with you and thank you so much for letting us have a look around and <laughs> indulging in plants and also jumping amongst them as well yeah, you, you didn't see that bit Will, but we, <laughs> we, we did yes we there was around. there was some jumping around in the plants Excellent. also um and it's been such a pleasure and you know it leading the way as well with what you're doing mm. is is really inspirational to yeah yeah and i think it's worth pointing out you're not just selling commercially you are selling to the public as well absolutely and how do people yeah. find out more about that side of it so our website is gevangreen.co.uk mm-hmm. and you'll you'll find out um more information about us mm-hmm. if you haven't had enough of us already <laughs> you're all right no. <laughs> yeah do you have instagram we i've heard of this this is quite a new thing you know. <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am a novice at instagram yeah <laughs> will's gone pale <laughs> uh, i, I the Gavin Green has Instagram, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, exactly. It's just Gavin Green. Yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah, find us there. I have to say, you uh, you did a reel, I think a couple of weeks ago, where you explained about Pete. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the clearest explanations I'd ever heard. Because like I've said a few times, this they're often kind of full of guilt, emotion, but it was just really, this is, this is this the is facts. It. And, yeah, it, thank you. and it was really relatable and it kind of really made me sit and up and watch. That yeah. is exactly the yeah. aim. We just want to get that mm. educational message across in a really Definitely. simple, mm. clear format that's not beating people up. Yeah. Exactly. It's making yeah. people aware. It's thought-provoking. Mm. And then there's the solution. Yeah, out there. I think you're doing really great. Yeah, yeah, it's really definitely. cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. No Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello? Is this thing on? Michael, Ellen, can you hear me? Well, first things first, I um I just like to um, figure out when we're gonna gonna have that dinner that you promised because um, I've been waiting for that email and that email still ain't come through. So um, yeah, I was just wondering about the dinner that you promised. So yeah, day in the life of um, Andy Wayne, the head gardener. Um, that's what they've asked me to talk about on this podcast. I mean, I haven't really got. A lot of idea what a podcast is. Um, seems a bit odd, really. I mean, we invented TV for a reason, so you could see somebody. We got this thing called video, but apparently nobody wants to see anybody more. They just want to listen to it on the old headphones. So if you're listening to this on the old headphones, um, my name's Andy Wayne. I'm a head gardener on a private estate um, on the Somerset Wiltshire border. Um, Michael Allen asked me to talk about day in the life of a gardener. So what I tend to do is um, we'll talk about it this time of year, which is sort of March, April time. Um, I tend to get up in the morning. I look out the window. Um, at the moment, I see it raining a lot. So what I tend to do is have a cup of coffee and look out the window and seriously consider my... Um, my career choices, really, um, I have a good old think about that. And then I, once I get a bit motivated, I go and meet the team. Um, when it's really wet, well, I'll be honest, what I tend to do is um, I'll send my assistants. Uh, apparently, we're not allowed to call them minions. That's degrading. So what I, I mean, yeah, for the purposes of this podcast, I'll call them assistant gardeners, not minion gardeners. But I... Uh, I'll send them out do the jobs I don't really want to do that day if it's raining. Yeah, so they can go out weeding and stuff and, you know, clearing stuff. And um, this time of year, we'd be just finishing cutting off borers back and mulching. So I'll send them out in the wet. And I I tend to go down in the greenhouse, really, because it's nice and warm in there. Uh, first job of the day is go in the greenhouse and check on my seedlings and stuff and see... Um, what survived the night with the mice, really? Because, I mean, you, you tend to put stuff out, like you're planting your seeds, like your, um, like your tromboncinos. They're classic to grow, they are, in them because they look like big giant willies when they're big. <laughs> so, yeah, we like to grow tromboncinos. So, yeah, we go down and we check on them and just see how many seedlings we got left after the mice has eaten the night before. That's fabulous. So then we go and replant some of those that the mice has had. Um, then we go around and do a bit of watering, check on the rest of it. Now, we've got a big fancy orangery here as well. So 
I'll go up and I'll water in there as well. And then, you know, it's generally the rest of the day is to check on, see what the assistance is getting up to, um, seeing if, if, you know, the work's up to standard. If it's not, then, well, we do have to have words, but we try to be nice about these things. I mean, everybody tries their best. So, yeah, and then once they've sort of figured out that I've been hiding down the greenhouse and I can't hide any longer, then I go and go and help them in the garden. Like, say, we're doing mulching, playing, playing catch-up with, like, the the rose pruning. we got lots of roses on the walls here. I mean, roses, really, I, you, you do have to wonder because they're a lot of work for, like, a week's worth of flower in the season, really. I know it's more than a little bit more than a week, but I mean they they savage little buckers really. I mean you, you get home at the end of the day and you pull in bloody thorns out your hand before you have your dinner, like I mean it's tis hard work. I mean I, I don't wanna say I don't like roses, but I don't like roses, but I don't wanna say that I don't like roses. But yeah, so this time of year that's what we'd be doing a lot of pruning and like say tidying stuff up and you know propagating you know we're getting the old you know we've got the old dahlias going in the greenhouse now at the moment we also grow some flowers for the house so obviously we got some like the tulips that's that's um doing fabulous displays in the house and other bits and pieces so yeah i mean that that is the long and short of it really i don't know what more to say about it really i mean the best way to describe gardening is it's like groundhog day i mean you do the same stuff over and over and over and over and over and over again and then when you finish doing that you sort of go back to the beginning and start all over again i don't i don't really know what more to say i mean michael ellen is that all right um you have to let me know and um well i just like to say thank you very much everybody for listening if you found it fascinating, um, let my choir know, and I think they're going to get me back for another episode that will be as thrilling as this one. But anyway, um, cheers then, boy. Hey, hey hi. I do think this is the latest. Hi. hi, I do think this is the latest gossip we've ever done. Uh, well, maybe for you being in UK, but I'm often catering to your late needs. When do you do you do I we know gossip I've just at said night? That it when it's <laughs> <laughs> the moment I said it, I knew I knew I was just lying, and it's like, oh god, if I was going to. I don't. Out I do. don't think that we've recorded <laughs> with you at night at like. No, 10. I'm sure of it. Well, Ellen, I'm going to the night into the night shift, and I'm seeing you as my Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh i hate being up so late this would be your dream job oh. i know do you know i genuinely thought I, I, could, much. <laughs> I could do night shifts and yeah is like really is there like a horticultural oh. career where you have to do night shifts apart from what you do <laughs> i guess you I could do anything at night yeah. Huh? <laughs> you could do your writing at night though, which you do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I do that at night. I went but like literally being with plants, like in a yeah. a breeder or <laughs> a, I don't know. You could breed uh night scented stocks or some night flowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of the yeah. night flowers, the moon oh, flowers. <laughs> willies. <laughs> oh dear. How are you? Oh, you've been on your allotment, right? Do you no uh, longer hate it? <laughs> I don't hate mine. Never hate mine. <laughs> it's my little haven. Um, yeah, I've had a, a little. Yeah. Of hours had a here potter. Huh? Had Pardon? a potter. Had a potter, have you? Had a, I've had a little potter down the plot. Yeah. I thought uh, you might have got your Norfolk accent back this week. Actually. Um, no, not yet. But I was with my mum today, <laughs> and yeah. I did, I did notice it slipping a little bit. Really? Lazy vowels? Lazy vowels, yeah. I don't know which one. Yeah. Both, to be fair. Um, I actually yeah, I think the same one with my parents, yeah. Vowels, yeah. vowels more. Like the Norfolk, you don't think, you're just like Norfolk, rather than yeah. Norfolk. 
So I think pals especially. But anyway, yes, I did slip a little bit, but I caught myself and then I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't need to be be (laughs) No, I need to be much smarter than that. (laughs) But let me tell you quickly. Well, while I was out with mum, I have to tell you about this book I bought. Yeah. It's called Otherland. Otherland. Um, A World in the Making. And it Mm -hmm. it has really cool reviews, but it's all about the earth and how it has grown but Mm -hmm. um, with plants and like with nature basically not just plants Mm -hmm. the earth crust and core and the lay of the lie of the land and how that's all changed Uh and um it looks amazing and i can't wait to start reading it the cover looks sexy enough yeah the cover looks sexy enough it does doesn't it and um financial Financial Times called it mind blowing, and I'm not getting paid for this. It's not gifted or an ad. I literally picked it up in the bookshop. Um, Tom Holland says the best book on the history of life on Earth I have ever read. Oh, Isn't that cool. really cool? Yeah. Oh, anyway, love like, it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you've been on adventure today, love. Well, adventure to the bookshop, really. I oh. I went out <laughs> went out with my mum because I didn't see yeah. her for, um, Mother's Day, so it was a day. Um. And- for lunch and whatnot, yes. Ooh. And let me just tell you the funniest thing before we move on. We Make went sure funny. Stones to look at books, and I, this one was near the gardening section in the nature area. Yeah. And I saw my books, and I said, I pointed to them to Mum. I said, "Oh, look, my books are on the shelf." Oh yeah. My sister, I went Shh, like that because she'll get. Ah! I read, I read, oh no that's cute though so no. I was like Shh, there's my books oh. but do you know what she said what? instead of going <laughs> she said everyone and their dog writes books these days <laughs> it, it is a bit like that though <laughs> <laughs> it's true but it's funny that she kind of even picked oh. up on it herself <laughs> oh how funny mine was in the Barbican the other day which was quite nice so yeah I was going to ask you about just the only taste. Yeah, <laughs> you went. Oh yeah, you went and look around. Well, yeah, because um, we were at the because we were staying in East London for my partner's birthday, and I was like, oh, I wonder around the Barbican, and then I was like, I wanted to go in the conservatory because, like, we obviously we've got an interview coming up with the head gardener there, but it's always like you have to book in advance online, and so I looked online and there wasn't any tickets till like seven pm. Um, but then we kind of just walked past and like you can go, well, I probably shouldn't say it in public but you can kind of get in when you're there because they were like oh you should really book online because it's obviously to filter the numbers etc but if you kind of rock up there then it's like oh they'll, they'll let you in because we heard them say that to the people in front of us and the people <laughs> behind us also heard them say that to us so I think probably then <laughs> it was probably over capacity that day <laughs> but yeah but it was really ah. Oh, it's really magical. Such an awesome landscape. It's just, yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah. That's it's really kind cool. of really, it's almost hard to describe in a way because it's kind of this kind of juxta of being industrial and kind of tropical and kind of edgy. And it's really, it's really casually planted as well. It's kind of not, it's hard to put that in the right way. It's not kind of super neat and pristine. It's very kind of homely. The okay. whole feel of the vibe of the place. It's just, yeah, it's really cool. I have Makes to say. It perhaps feel a little bit more kind of realistic, like you could. Yeah. Do that totally. There's yeah. some really lovely specimens in there as well, including ourselves. <laughs> including ourselves. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, so that was a cool bonus because I'd kind of been thinking, oh, when can I go? When can I get a ticket and stuff? But then it just so happens if you just rock up, it's kind of okay. Well, you've, you've literally, you know, given back to everyone now. It's people going to be going along and queuing up because you've no, said... No, to be honest, to be honest, though, Ellen, most people, I've got friends and like, and you know how I can be a little bit cheeky and I'm happy just to rock up somewhere and see what happens. If I ever say that to some of my friends, they come for, oh, no, I couldn't. And, and a lot of them probably wouldn't because they'd think they'd be turned away. But I kind of know that I've got... I've got enough kind of cheekiness and flirt in me that I probably will get in. <laughs> hey, Michael, do you... Do I'll you always ever, try it. <laughs> do you ever say, do you know who I am? No, no, no. <laughs> that's really crappy, honestly. <laughs> and when someone... Where did I go? I went in W6 Garden Centre the other day and the guy on the counter was like, oh, you missed the Punky. And I was like, yeah. And like, I kind of like... 
I was kind of in a rush and I wasn't really in the right mood to kind of like engage. I was kind of like, and I didn't really say oodles. <laughs> so I hope he doesn't think I'm like, oh, he's a bit stuck up. <laughs> but so, and like, and um, who said to me the other day, a friend of mine said, oh, do you ever get recognized in public? And like, probably same as you, only in context and deep context as well. Like, you know, a trade event or a kind of specific garden center or not, not ever just randomly you know and even even at a flower show or something not not even that often then you know so no it's not i wouldn't want to be famous i I moan about this to to everyone all the time because it's not that glam you know yeah no no No. and i i think for me it's like just that privacy aspect like yeah yeah yeah. to think you could walk down the street and someone like know it's you or know what you're doing or take a photo oh. or expect that you want to chat as well yeah. you know what I mean? like we don't all want to chat all of the time i know i know that's why if i ever met mariah i would not compliment her work <laughs> if you met mariah you would like literally be no I crazy. Would, i would be so normal i would just say something about how was the traffic <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> if you met Dua Lipa, I think that you would fall to your knees. No, the only one is Danny Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, man. Oh. Well, in other news, my Albuca spiralis has flowered and it doesn't have the fragrance that was promised. Um, oh. Out on the balcony, I've got lots of lovely bulbs out, which is nice. Your bulbs must be out on the, on the allotment or... Yeah, some of them haven't done very well, and I've got tulip rust everywhere, but the flowers oh, are flowering. What, from first year or second, you mean? Uh, some are first year, some are second year. The second years are a definite oh, no, which is really? you know, to be expected, really, with yeah. some of them. But um, even the first year tulips have got rust. So I think that whole patch is an issue. But anyway, I've got some flowering, yes, and, they're, and they are. To the flock. Uh huh, yeah. but you can use them as cut flowers because it's just in the leaf, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh, yeah. yeah. that's cool. And then I'll dig them up. But yeah, um, yeah. I'll, dig them up just, I'll dig them up. I'll dig them up. This is just the most beautiful time of year. It's just. Yeah, it's the best. It is. It's really the best. I don't want any bloody summer or summer. Oh, summer can do us nuts. Winter <laughs> as well. I'll take autumn and spring. I want the in betweenies. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. It's just like, it's just lovely that like when the sun comes, I think it's so full of hope. And when you get that kind of sun that beams through the new leaves on the trees, you get this real kind of, it's like nature's Instagram filter, filter you know? Yeah. It really is. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I like that. Nature's Instagram oh, filter. But it's just, oh, uh, it is just how it all should be. It's natural. Yeah, it's a fun. It lifts us out of hibernation. It makes us feel better. We get some vitamin D. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just so beautiful. I went for a walk with a friend of mine, um, right in the middle of the Norfolk countryside, and it uh-huh. was it was so uplifting. You know, yeah, we just totally. and talked and saw the daffodils and primroses and loads of like um, there was loads of like red dead nettle and cleavers and all that stuff. But the bees, yeah. like the early bees, were out loving it, and it yeah. was just, just I came oh, home and just felt so satisfied. Uh-huh. So I just nice. had my. Mm. Chelsea pass come through today. I do hope you've had yours, otherwise this is awkward. I'd just like you to know that, yeah, I have had mine. I got it about two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, so that was nice. Hampton Court as well. Yeah, same. But I don't know if I'm going to go to Hampton Court. I've got to be honest. Oh, why oh. is that? Um, because the dates are maybe a little bit away. awkward. Oh, okay. I get it. That's fine. Yeah. I'll talk back to you. <laughs> yeah, we can. We can okay, talk. Yeah. Um, I can remember going to Hampton Press Day, not last year. So whenever it was before that, because I don't really know yeah. when. Um, and it was really, really quiet. When you go on Press Day to Hampton Court, there's just no one there. It's yeah. Oh, definitely. Super quiet. I think this was the uh, after COVID one yeah maybe that was it yeah yeah, Yeah, yeah. maybe that was it i don't remember i was with you i think yeah 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 Yeah, that was me that was me yeah (laughs) (laughs) that was you not someone else not someone else (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> um, yeah, so that's really cool, Ellen, I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Chelsea this year. It seems like there's yeah. lots of stuff, you know, going on and the gardens look really lovely. So it's always a nice day out. Yeah, it's always a nice day out. <laughs> it is. That's a compliment I'm, for an event. I meant that That's more. Nice. Do you know what? I, my brain was skipping to the next like thing I wanted to say, which is we're um, very, you know, we can go on press day, which is a, a different kind of day. But for anyone who ever kind of considers whether they should or shouldn't go to Chelsea on any day, then go because it's a great day out. That's sort of, that's yeah. where I'm going in my head. Like Chelsea is. You should work for a marketing agency. It's like an awesome day out. out. Hang on a minute. Just so you know, for this evening, you've told me that you would annihilate me (laughs) as a supply teacher, which was, you know, quite rude. I'd be swinging on my chair. I'd have my chair on two legs for sure. You're you're, you're basically like being rude to me this evening. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Ellen. Really is sorry. it because is it because you've got to work the night shift and you know I'm now going to put my feet up and have a little? Yeah, sneeze? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And we um and we still have a lawnmower, but I'm not sure why. But we haven't got any real grass that we're showing it on, so I don't know. So I'm going to have to do a lot of imagining. <laughs> <laughs> That's your job. That is your job. Oh no. I sell the dream, but it's cool. It's amazing how it gives me the skill to be able to talk like just talk <laughs> you always I've... had that skill oh you you had that yeah, skill no. from when i first met you anyway i don't know about before uh, that but you you have the ability to just talk <laughs> yeah and i think i <laughs> underestimate that because like as you know like my partner's quite quiet and like compared to me and i'm always like kind of like la, 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 <laughs> but i think you're the same actually yeah yeah sometimes when we go out i actually have to say i actually say to my husband this evening, can you do some of the talking? And he's like, yeah, but I don't yeah. need you to do it all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm like, this evening, I'd like you to do some talking, please, as well. But I, I don't love think... I, I, love I couldn't do what you do, <laughs> like, with your sales and, like, with QVC and, like, all of that. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Couldn't. It would... If you're it's, in it, you might find that you can. I don't know. Oh, so, Ellen, I've had the best idea ever. What? <laughs> Next time we're on a gossip, we yeah. can type and we can see if you can sell a plant to me. <laughs> what do you reckon? Okay. That would be wicked. Honestly, okay, we'll I'll... tell you in advance so you can prep a little bit. All right. Yeah. And we'll give okay. you like two, maybe two minutes on the clock. And you don't, like, it's not that you kind of, we stop you at two minutes. It's like you have to fill the time for two minutes. So, yeah. That's, that just sounds horrible. But sure, yeah, I'll do horrible. that. <laughs> but you can probably talk for a, two minutes about a plant anyway. <laughs> I'm really be pleasantly surprised by your skills. Why don't we put it out there on social media for people to give an idea of what plant to try and sell? Yeah, go on then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, write that I, down. Remember that, Ellen. See what I can come up with. Um, yeah. I just think, like, I just don't know if I'd be able to do it. <laughs> like, if it's something that I didn't personally like, it doesn't matter that I don't personally like it. I get that. You yeah. are selling something that other people might like. But if I didn't personally yeah. like it, I find it really hard to like like outwardly act that it's cool. <laughs> well no, because you're not you're not kinda of calling it cool from your own experience. You're kinda of, you're relating to the fact that it could be cool for many people in many different ways. So you're kind of putting yourself in different people's shoes, I guess. Which is yeah. it's, it's easier than you think. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, um, we'll do that. We'll right, that now, post it now. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so that'll be a couple of, because um, we're doing alternate gossips now, aren't we, Ella Mary? Yeah, I'm So uh, every other will have a solo interview rather than a gossip every week because we felt that um, you guys might get bored of us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be <laughs> honest, I get, bo- I get bored of us. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is cool. And uh, first one is me next week. And I'm interviewing a chap about lovely hydrangeas. So I hope you'll love that. That's really cool and really great timing as well. Do, you know, because there's height people, you know, the heads are still on lots yeah. of hydrangeas. And then people are like, oh, I don't really know what to do with them. Oh, Should no. I bring it back oh. or not? So that's a really good, that's a really good time. To oh, so make sure you get it right. 
Mm. <laughs> yeah, cool. I don't know what my first one will be, but hopefully by next week I will know. Ah, yeah. Easy, Ellen. With the talking you do, easy. <laughs> cool, Doc. All right, then. I need to clock in. <laughs> for a you shift at need that. to clock <laughs> off from here and clock into QBC. I hope you have a good show this evening and I hope you can, you know, use the lawnmower in an appropriate way without grass. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> That's cool. Anything else? No? We're good. No, I'm, no, I'm good. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling. I think you were nocturnal. <laughs> Hello, hello, <laughs> hello everyone. On the podcast a couple of weeks ago, we uh, gave the homework task of naming songs that had flowers in the title. And Michael stole mine and I come up, came up with some great titles. <laughs> <laughs> and then we put it out on social media as well. And we got some really cool responses. So this week, there's homework again. And that is to name flowers in a movie title. Michael is laughing at me. I just don't know why. Because um, <laughs> if you were a teacher, I would completely annihilate you. You'd be like the supply teacher. <laughs> why? Why? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. But indeed, Ellen, this week's homework is to name any films that have a plant in the title or... Indeed, you could kind of cheat a little bit and it could be any film that has a plant as the kind of centrepiece of the film. That would work as well. But yeah. I thought before, what was your we one? Even, before we even went that far, I mm. thought it would be totally appropriate, first of all, in my class, since I am the supply <laughs> teacher, to yeah. uh, read out some of the answers that we had on oh, the, on social media from before. So. There was a lovely picture of Edelweiss and, of course, you all know that song, right? And we had some great answers. One was Dig By and Dougal, Build Me Up Buttercup, which is really cool. Uh, Tulip Dot Pupil, who's really cool. I met her at the Charlotte Gardening Club. Uh I sing Edelweiss to my son every night before putting him down. That is so (laughs) cute. Um, And then afterwards, I realized Daisies by Katy Perry. So that was a good one as well. Um, There's some others. You can go and check that out on the plant-based podcast uh, socials. So, okay. Um, So, films with flowers or plants in the title. My first one is Driving Miss Daisy. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. What about you? What's yours? Well, mine is Little Joe. Little Little Joe. Oh, it's girl. a film which has, which has a plant as the centerpiece. <laughs> okay. If you okay. haven't seen it, really cool. You have to watch it. So there you go. So when we put this out there on social media on Monday, we would love to hear your answers. And you can cheat a little bit like Michael just did. But yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to check out our sponsor, Stonely Wines. Their premium wines in New Zealand are made from 100% sustainably sourced grapes and they're vegan certified our favorite the stonely sauvignon blanc displays fresh and variety true aromas of passion fruit and vibrant citrus and crisp notes yummy we have an exclusive discount for listeners and you can get 20 percent off stonely sauvignon blanc exclusively on amazon when you use the code stonely 20 The music for the Plum Face podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo. Mm-hmm.